So this film, Warlock, came about after I graduated from university. I was very excited to get working on another short film, something of a similar scale to Utopia Trial, something that I could really try lots of different visual effects, have a bit of fun with, and something that I could be really proud of. I came up with the concept for the film around the same time as the Utopia Trial. I was trying to think of ideas that involved a lot of visual effects that I could showcase for my degree, but I ended up making Utopia Trial for uni because it had a bit more variety of effects, like there was full CG characters in that. So then, after uni, it felt only right to do my other idea. It turned out in the end that Warlock actually had more visual effects shots, but we'll get onto that later. So I really wanted to make something involving magic. Two sorcerers, having a duel, just lots of interesting effects and spells that I could play around with. I was a big fan of the BBC Merlin series, and that was a heavy inspiration for this film, as well as, of course, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. I didn't want it to be that the talisman simply makes you evil. I wanted to make it quite character focused. I wanted to tell a story more about the corruption of power and how far some people would go to hold on to that power. Both characters are very devoted and determined people. I don't believe anyone is born inherently evil. I think it's all through events and experiences. But the hunter has obviously become so used to having this power that even the thought of it being taken away from him has turned him into a bit of a bad person, doing bad things just to keep the talisman and keep that enhanced power. And so the warlock is very determined to get the talisman away from the hunter to put a stop to this once and for all, no matter the cost. I wanted it to be more about the fact that even if you set out with good intentions, you wouldn't then want to let that power go, even if you intend to do good with it. I know what you're feeling right now. Power. You'll never want to let that go. It's not about whether the Warlock could destroy it. He could cast the spell to destroy it. It's more about the decision and the willingness to let go of something. So my good friend Andrew helped me immensely with this film. He helped to front some of the budget to make the film, rather than having to wait and save up the money myself. And it wouldn't have been possible to have made it when we did without him. So that was a really massive help, and I can't thank him enough for that. So the storyboards for the film were created again by Alex Thomas. Just like with Utopia, it was so helpful being able to just look at the storyboards rather than having to read the script and remember where I was and what we were shooting. I can just look and be like, oh yeah, it's that shot. And it's, it's such a great help to be able to visualise the project before actually going out and filming it. It just makes everything go a lot smoother on set. But this doesn't necessarily lock me into a certain type of shot. It's a starting point, and I know that I've then got a checklist of shots that I need, or similar shots that I need, to get the same story across. This film does branch away from the storyboards a bit more than Utopia Trial did, but it gives me the flexibility to still experiment on set and get different shots that neither me or Alex would have thought of before. Costumes were again done by Joanna, with it being medieval, it was a lot more challenging than Utopia Trial. We couldn't just pick up any sort of clothes. They had to be period accurate. The shirts were sourced from a costume hire, but she actually created from scratch the Warlock's cloak and trousers, and the Hunter's trousers and his cowl. We made sure to separate the characters through the costumes and also tell more about who they are. Like, the Warlock has a lot more earthy tones to him. He looks a bit more peasantish and a bit more downtrodden. Whereas the Hunter has a lot more grandeur about him, and more high-class, expensive clothes, especially with the leather waistcoat. Joanna also sketched out many different designs for the Talisman, which I then created a model of in Maya, so that Andy could 3D print it. I then sanded this down and painted it to look like metal, and added quite a bit of weathering and grime into the grooves and stuff. And Joanna was also just a massive help on set, maintaining costume and continuity, making sure everything looked right in between takes, it really helps to be able to have someone else worry about the things like that so that I can just focus on my specialties like the characters and the story and the visual effects. So we actually managed to get all of this shot in two days. It was an incredibly intense two days. We had to move very, very fast to get everything shot. So I really just want to thank Milan and Yuho for being so professional and, and working really, really quickly. They really threw themselves into it. You know, I asked a lot of them. It was a very physically demanding shoot, and they really pulled it off, and I'm really happy with what they gave me. Uh, we're shielded! 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 really? Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to thank Andy, Liam and Ashley for helping me manage everything else on set. I had Andy as assistant camera helping me swap lenses and also capturing behind the scenes footage. We had Liam on audio so I could leave all that to him. He also took the time to get a lot of foley sounds and wild sounds while we were there which was really helpful when I came to sound design. And Ashley as a runner just helping with props and the tripod and everything else. It was actually raining for most of the second day so I also want to thank those lads for holding up the umbrellas in between takes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it really was a fantastic shoot. I think we managed to work very efficiently and there was a few periods where we were rushing but we managed to get everything done on time and to a standard that I was very happy with. I was really pleased with all the footage that we got from the two days. Just like on Utopia, I shot this all with my trusty little Canon M50 and a couple of vintage lenses. There was a couple of shots where I needed wider angles but other than that it's all done on some nice vintage lenses which create a really nice pleasing look, at least to me. I really wanted to create the anamorphic effect in this film so I used, again, the 3D printed anamorphic filters and they work really well to emulate those classic looking lenses. But a lot of that effect is also done in post. So I created my own preset to distort the image and give me an anamorphic effect. So what this does is it pinches in the corners and stretches out the middle so that you get a bit of a bowing effect on the image. There's also things like the blurring around the edges and the corners, heavy vignetting and the chromatic aberration all of this to create a vintage look that definitely suits the genre of the film. And I think it just goes to show what you can do with a very cheap and entry-level camera. I think we also managed to move so fast because I was doing the majority of the film handheld. This was partly out of necessity for speed, but also as a creative choice. But because this is a very action-heavy film, I wanted to keep the camera very kinetic and very fast-paced. There was only a few shots where I actually ended up using the tripod mainly for visual effect reasons and sometimes just for the dialogue scenes where it didn't need a moving camera but it worked really well i was very happy with how the two days came out i think we all certainly needed a good rest after that the editing of the film was another challenge mainly because of how many takes i had for each shot it was very time consuming going through and choosing which take i wanted because i can be quite indecisive when the differences between two takes are so minute but I'll still just keep checking between them and see which one I want. As I said before, there was an awful lot of visual effects in this film. I'd probably say the hardest section was when the wallop pulls up all the shrubbery and fires it at the hunter to distract him. So that was done with tons and tons of particles of bracken spinning around in a vortex. But then I also had to rotoscope the hunter out to make sure that some of it could go behind him. And that took an awful long time to do. There were some shots where the green screen could be used if it was closer up but I only have a relatively small green screen, so for the wider shots I just had to rotoscope it. Over the course of the two wet days filming, we ended up flattening all the bracken and shrubbery in that little area. This ended up actually working in our favour for the bracken effect. It made it much easier for that sequence and beyond where there's no shrubbery left on the ground, and then I could just add CG bracken to any point before that where the bracken has already been flattened. So throughout the film, while there's still bracken, it slowly becomes CGI bracken but it's just one of those things that ends up working out better than you hoped on set, something that I hadn't planned for. For the sword sequence, I did look for prop foam swords and stuff like that, but for safety and budget reasons, we ended up going with a green stick and I replaced it with the sword in post. But this again actually ended up being better because it meant I could have more flexibility on how close the sword actually got to the hunter. Adding the sword in was quite time consuming because of how fast the sword was moving in the frame. Unfortunately when I shot it I hadn't considered motion blur, so motion tracking wasn't working very well. So I ended up manually tracking the 3D sword to the hand, which was quite time consuming and my own fault. 
In hindsight, I would have shot it with a higher shutter speed so that I didn't have as much motion blur. But because of how fast the sword was moving through frame, I just couldn't automatically motion track that, so I had to go through manually. Definitely the most challenging part about the sword stuff was as soon as Yuho was interacting with it as well. That created a lot more painstaking rotoscoping and tracking to make sure that it wasn't clipping through his hand. And also making sure the shadows and reflections of his hand are on the sword as well. A couple of the more complex effects in this film were the CG stunt doubles. Now, I'd used a CG stunt double in Utopia Trial as well, but it was for the sequence where the explosion goes off and the Wanderer gets thrown out of the barn. But it was very small in frame and very, very quick. Whereas in this one, I really wanted to push it further and try and implement it as seamlessly as I could. I experimented with trying to make them actual rag dolls, but it didn't give me quite as much control as I wanted. So I ended up actually manually animating the Warlock getting thrown backwards. But I think the thing that sells those effects the most is the cloth simulation for the cloak. It was a bit fiddly, but for my first try at cloth simulations, I'm very happy with how it ended up. So one of the first effects I actually thought about when coming up with the idea for this film was the invisibility effect. So this was a really fun effect to do, and really very simple. It just required two or three plates, I locked them off on the tripod. There's one shot where Yuho's in front, and then Millen's invisible behind. For that one, I had Millen on the green screen that I could turn invisible, then Yuho on a green screen, and then the clean plate, which ended up actually being one of my favourite shots in the film. I was really quite proud of how that one looked and I think the invisible effect is something quite interesting to do because by its nature it's invisible. So how do you make something invisible but also visually interesting? I wanted to have a slight shimmering effect so you could still see something but also realise that he was invisible to the hunter. There was a couple of moments in the film where I actually had to create some shots from scratch. Probably because of how fast we were moving on set, I actually missed a couple of shots. So there was one shot after the tornado of leaves where the hunter is very confused and he can't find the warlock. I didn't have another shot to cut to that wasn't the hunter. Um, so I actually used the HDRI that I'd shot for lighting all the visual effects elements to create a 360 shot that I could put a camera in and use as a first person view from the hunter, which makes it a lot clearer as to what's going on in that sequence. And there was a couple of other ones where I had to repurpose shots from the tornado in the later bit of the duel when they both stun each other. But this just shows that even when you've gone through lots of planning and you've got lots of people there, because of the pace we were moving on set, we did end up missing something. Some things do fall through the cracks, but all things like this are things that I can learn from and apply in my future films. Some of my favourite effects were the magic blasts. I left these ones to the end because they were really simple to do but very fun and satisfying. And the majority of these were done using VFX elements from Film Riot, which work really, really well. And this was the same with the lightning and the fire. They were very simple to do, but again, very satisfying to create. The shields was something that was very interesting. That was something that I was debating the design of for a long time as to how physical it should look. I ended up settling on the design similar to the Jackal's shields in the Halo games or the Gungan's shields in Star Wars. Something that was see-through and distorted. I wanted the shield energy to be created out of nothing, but then disappear along with the blast that it absorbs that energy from. And this also plays in at the end of the film when the Warlock gets the talisman and he's then able to hold the shield up for longer and it can absorb more hits because his powers are now heightened by the talisman. So he can still do the same spells, they're just all turned up to 11. The effect of the hunter being trapped in the tree was another really complex one and something that in hindsight I would have approached differently. We, we did it by filming him leant against the tree and then I just rotoscoped out the face and stuck that on the tree. That took a long time to rotoscope accurately. It would have been a lot easier, quicker and tidier if I had made a green screen with the hole for a face that Yuho could put his face through. But unfortunately that thought only occurred to me as I was doing the effects and it was taking a long time and I wished I'd have done it a different way. But that's just all part of the learning process of filmmaking. The sound design in this film was definitely something that was a bit more challenging. 
A lot of the film is foley sounds, so there's footsteps and leaves and stuff like that, which is all very simple. It's time consuming, but it's relatively simple. But some of the complex stuff was definitely all the original sounds that I had to create for all the spells and different things like that. I actually created a lot of the spell sounds just using my voice to really create the sound that I was thinking of that I couldn't think how to create in any other way than just to vocalise it. And then playing around with editing and distorting that in different ways. Other bits were sourced from sound asset packs and stuff like that. And an interesting but subtle detail within the sound design is that when the characters actually say their spells, there's also a mystical whispering effect layered in with that. This was done through dozens of extra recordings of the spell being spoken in Old English and Modern English, layered in alongside the audio from the actual take. It's a small detail, but it was something that I was quite excited to try, just because it makes the spells that they cast a little bit more interesting, and almost as if their spells are being channeled from the world around them. As a writer, director and effects artist, sound design isn't one of my strengths, but it's something that I strive to keep working at and keep improving. After his great work on Utopia Trial, I was really excited to work with Simon again for the music. This was something obviously quite different in genre from the Utopia Trial, but something that we could create a lot of different sounds with. He worked incredibly hard on this and put an awful lot of time into it. You know, he, he even started creating some themes for the film before we'd even shot anything, which was really helpful for sort of locking in the, the tone of the film. We were hoping to get a string quartet and the choir recorded from live recordings, but due to current world events, that didn't quite pan out. It was a really exciting moment when I put the final score into the film and then could watch the film properly with music because it can sometimes be quite tricky to tell how the film is going to feel in the end but the music definitely helps the flow of the whole film and definitely aids in the pacing and the storytelling. You can also listen to the soundtrack for Utopia Trial and Warlock on Spotify and I'll leave the link in the description for that. We're also working together currently for my new short film so you can definitely look forward to the fantastic score he's creating for that. All in all, this was a really fun project for me. This was definitely a great project to get on with after finishing uni. I definitely feel like I've learnt a lot from this that I can't wait to apply to other films as soon as I can get out and film them. Overall, this was about eight or nine months of production that it kept me busy for. And it ended up being something that maintained my sanity for the first lockdown in 2020. I'm currently working on a fully CG film, Welcome to Mars something that I can do while we're all stuck indoors. I've got a lot of projects planned for the future. I'm very excited to just keep learning, keep experimenting and keep creating. What are we filming? <laughs> no more. <laughs> I totally forgot my line. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I fell off <laughs> Stop! <laughs> that, that came out louder than I thought it would. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed the film and this little behind the scenes video. If you did, please share it with anyone who you think might be interested. And also consider following me on any of my social medias to keep up to date with any of my future film projects that I've got planned. There's also a visual effects breakdown that you can watch 
storyboard comparison and you can listen to the soundtrack all available in the links up in the corner or in the description so thank you very much for watching and i really hope that you enjoyed